Hello, and welcome to the American Massage, Chiropractic, and Acupuncture Conference pre-conference broadcast series on One Concept Radio. I'm Felicia Brown, and I'll be your host for this interview and series. This is one of several broadcasts with the presenters and experts who are appearing in San Diego, California, April 20th through 22nd, 2012, and who are brought to you by One Concept. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the 2012 American Massage, Chiropractic, and Acupuncture Conference sponsors, Massage Warehouse Script, MPA Media, H.J. Ross, ABMP, and Massage Envy Careers for making this year's event possible. Our special guest today is Joe Bob Smith. Joe Bob and I will be talking about his involvement at the conference in two different areas. One, the Massage Envy Careers panel discussion on career paths, and two, the student day activities. But first, let me tell you a little bit about Joe Bob. Joe Bob Smith fell into massage by accident. Amazed by how he, by how receiving massages had greatly enhanced his first time marathon training, Joe Bob yearned to know something so seemingly simple Pardon me, Joe Bob yearned to know how something so seemingly simple had such miraculous results. A few classes later, he was now the one massaging fellow runners. Then, just as his burgeoning sports massage practice began to bloom, Joe Bob's massage alma mater came up for sale. He and a fellow classmate teamed up to purchase the Touch Therapy Institute. They dove into this uncharted territory with gusto, and after a two-year turnaround, sold to the National Holistic Institute, a Northern California-based massage school. Joe Bob stayed with NHI to oversee the new Southern California operations. Now, as NHI's strategic development manager, Joe Bob focuses on long-term growth initiatives, including new campuses, continuing education, and industry relationships. Joe Bob also serves on the California Massage Therapy Council. Joe Bob, welcome to the American Massage, Chiropractic, and Acupuncture Conference pre-conference broadcast series. Thank you so much for making time to talk to me about this event and your involvement at the conference. Thanks, Felicia. I'm excited to be here and to talk about the conference. Well, I'm really interested to hear more about what you're going to be doing there and, of course, looking forward to seeing you in April. Now, you actually live in California, so I'm hoping that before we really dig in, uh, that you can give everyone listening an idea of just why having this conference in your backyard is such a good thing and maybe even why they should make the trip to California. Well, Southern California in April is absolutely gorgeous, so just coming for the weather and the scenery alone would be well worth the trip. But it's rare that we have a conference of this size in Southern California. And in fact, as long as I've been doing massage, I can't even remember the last time. I don't think we've ever had one of this size in Southern California. And for all the massaging that happens in Southern California, which we probably have more massaging per capita than anywhere else in the United States or the world, it's rare that, uh, or it's odd that we don't have something more like this. So I think it's going to be a huge turnout, a chance for all of these massage therapists from not only Southern California, but everywhere to come together and and share in, in their passion that they love and what they love about massage. Well, I'm I'm kind of surprised, too, that there haven't been more conferences out there. I mean, I've been a therapist for about 18 years, and we always heard about, oh, well, they started doing this in California before we got it. So you would think that there would be more uh, of that type of thing there in the past. Um, you know, but so, so it's, it is an amazing opportunity for the AMC and now with the chiropractic and acupuncture uh, to come out there. Yeah, it's terrific. I When I first heard of it last year that it was being planned Uh, again I was just I was excited because it's normally I have to travel somewhere else for uh, for conventions and sometimes I like where I'm going sometimes not but in this case it not only is so close to where so many therapists live here in Southern California but again in, in April I can't think of a better time of year to hit up San Diego and enjoy all that San Diego has to offer and I've been lucky enough to be down there at the at the resort where the convention's going to be held, and it's just 
it's the perfect place for massage therapists. Lots of outdoor greenery, hidden spaces, gardens, fountains, pools, all that kind of stuff. And it just, uh, it's going to be a great trip for anybody that makes it out in April to San Diego. Well, you're definitely making me very excited that I'm going to be there. <laughs> I've never been to California and, um, to have the first opportunity to be there at such a beautiful place sounds awesome to me. Yeah, so now, it's, uh, it's going to be a treat. Well, I know it will be. This is a fantastically fun conference anyway, uh, and to have it on such a great backdrop will be wonderful. Now, besides your own classes at the uh, at the conference, Joe Bob, what are you most looking forward to doing or being a part of at this year's event? I love seeing everybody. I know so many people now in the massage industry, and and it seems I think they're all going to be there. I can't think of anybody that's not going to be there. And so I'm excited to see them, but I'm mostly looking forward to I know last year there was a pirate-themed night. I haven't heard what sort of big shindig party theme thing is going to happen this year, but I can. I saw the pictures from last year and how much fun. Unfortunately, I missed last year's conference. I heard great things about it and saw all the fun that they had, especially with all their mustaches, everything, pirate night. So I'm looking forward to seeing all of these people in the massage world that I know and that I respect in some sort of theme costume event. Oh, uh, well, I'm sh- I don't know what it is. They're being very secretive about some of these things, but I know there are a lot of surprises planned for this California conference, so I'm sure – uh, it will definitely be creative and fun and uh, just a great time for everyone. Well, I will be ready. <laughs> Good. Well, maybe you'll be able to give me some advice on where to go costume shopping with the last minute. You know, Hopefully we'll have some good advance notice on that, but I can't wait to, to be a part of whatever it is. So, yeah, it's, uh, like I said, I was sorry. I just saw uh, all the fun pictures from last year, and I was like, it was last year it was in Atlanta, and I was just, I didn't make the trip, and I was like, oh, I was so regretted it afterwards, and so I wouldn't, I wouldn't miss this one, even if it wasn't in my own backyard, I would be at it, but luckily it's close. Well, last year's conference was in my backyard. I'm just a few hours from Atlanta, uh, up here in North Carolina, and it was, it was great fun. I can't tell all the stories about the things that I saw at that pirate party, but it was a blast. <laughs> so what is it? What happens when you're dressed as a pirate? <laughs> That's right. That's right. <clears throat> so now at the conference in California, I understand that you'll be participating in at least two venues, probably more as things get closer, uh, but you'll be involved in the Massage NV panel discussing career paths and then the student day where you'll be talking about the benefits of You'll have to say this for me if it, if there's a way to pronounce it, the CAMTC certification. Since I know that there are a lot of students listening to these calls, um, they're going to want to know more about these events. In particular, I, I'm really curious just first off about the CAM, is it CAMTC? How do you say that or do you just use the initials? We just use the initials, CAMTC. All right. All right. So tell me a little bit about the, the benefits of the certification. Sure. CMTC stands for um, California Massage Therapy Council, and that's the that's essentially the equivalent of our state board here in California. So we offer a state certification that's unlike other states, it's voluntary at, at this moment in time. So as a massage therapist, in order to be legally working or legally employed, you generally have to either go to your local uh, city government and get either a permit or you can go to the CAMTC and get a a state certification from us. And so it's only two years old, so it's relatively new. Nonetheless, we've had over 37,000 applications, and we've certified over about 27,000 of those at this point in time. So it's definitely a, a... a booming, growing thing that most new therapists in the field are taking advantage of. So that way they can get one certification work in the entire state of California, which is obviously a large, good-sized state. So I'll be speaking to students exactly what is certification, what does it mean, why do you need it, and how easy it is to to apply. And we will, the CMTC will actually have a booth and representatives there in the exhibit hall and we'll be able to meet with people and help them out 
if they're if they're wanting to apply or they have questions about their application. So just out of because I'm on the other side of the country and not deeply involved in licensure, does that what you're saying then there's no um, required certification in California at present or no required licensure or it's just done by each individual city, it's not done by the state at large? It's pretty much required. There's just a couple of small places in California, Northern California, where uh, where the local government doesn't require it. But for the 99% of California, you do have to have something. You can't just call yourself a massage therapist and uh, and start charging people for it. So you do have to have something. You either have to have the local permit or you have to have the state one. And okay. in a state with as many cities as California, it, if you're working in more than one jurisdiction, it can get fairly expensive, time-consuming. Uh, it's very limiting to have just your local permit. And it's also generally more expensive to have the local permit than the state one. So uh, the state one gives you the freedom to work anywhere in the state of California. It's also more affordable than most of the local permits, certainly if you have to get more than one permit to work in more than one city. And of course, for a student just coming out of massage school, it gives a certain amount of respect because now you're able to legally call yourself a certified massage therapist. Well, those are a lot of good points. And, you know, I'm a marketing coach, so I'm always thinking about, well, how can people get more business? How can they how can they be more successful? And to me, it's a no-brainer. If you're basically expanding your opportunities to work by having that state uh, certification, that means you can go anywhere in the state, and probably it's going to be more well-respected if you were to move somewhere else than if you just said, oh, well, I'm licensed to work in L.A. Exactly. It brings much more much more respect, so you're able to put it on your business cards and your website, tell clients, uh, certainly uh, we encourage in some cases you, on certain advertising, you have to put it on there. So it lets the, the public know when they're coming and getting a massage from you that you are actually certified as a massage therapist. You're not just somebody trying to call themselves a massage therapist or you lack the training that uh, that the general public would expect a therapist to have. So it's, uh, by all means, it, I think I can't imagine being a working massage therapist in California and not having it at this point. Well, it, it makes perfect sense to me. And again, all of those things when you're talking about, you can put it on your business cards, on your website, it's really going to improve the amount of business that therapists get because it is giving them one more uh, credential or, I guess, feather in their cap to show how they are a professional and why their clients can trust them. So I think that, you know, if I was living in California, that'd definitely be what I would do. If I moved out there, it'd probably be the first thing I would check out so that I could have as many opportunities available to me as possible for getting a job or working somewhere. And then to show if I was going to be working on my own that I was serious about it. So yeah, if, I, if you're if you're a therapist there at the conference and you said there's going to be a booth and people can get information or even do what maybe get an application to sign up for this? Yeah, so if you are already certified, certainly come by and say hello, see, meet some of the people that are, are responsible for making the council operate. Also, the council is always uh, working on behalf of those who are certified in the massage profession. So if they're, if people have run into problems with their local jurisdiction regarding laws or any sorts of restrictions or unfair practices against massage therapists, by all means, come by talk to uh, some faces. You don't have to email. You don't have to phone call. You can come by and see, meet some faces of the CAMTC. If you're new to it, if you're a student, then it's going to be the perfect chance to meet some of the people who, who are behind the council that you'd be signing up with. And those people would be more than happy to start you along on the process. If there's any, it's a fairly simple process, I think, uh, for signing up for licenses and certifications. I've done many in life, and I think this is one of the simpler ones. But if you are having difficulties with it or there's something uh, that you question or want to know more information about, there will be representatives there in the exhibit hall at the CMTC booth who will help you. And, of course, I'll be talking about some of those details during the student day presentation on the CMTC. Excellent. Now, you actually serve on the, on the California Massage Therapy Council board, am I correct? 
Yes, yes, I do. And what what is your motivation or reason for volunteering in that regard? The I think for therapists, sometimes being a massage therapist can be a lonely profession because you work generally in an isolated environment. You're not always around a lot of other people, and you're toiling day in and day out to work and do your job, and you either don't realize or sometimes you, you realize but forget that there's a larger profession out there and there's laws that govern our profession, there's industry things that govern our profession, and I think it's important to be a part of that and to be a part of something that's just bigger than ourselves being in a massage room. Not that there's, not that that's not great and we do a lot of good for people by what we do in our day-to-day life as massage therapists, but it's nice to be able to give back to the profession that has given our, our job to us. So that's really, really my motivation is just to help make the profession of massage therapy better. Well, I couldn't agree with you more as far as the reasons to be involved. And I think, uh, you know, I actually at last year's American Massage Conference, I was very fortunate to be named Volunteer of the Year. And uh, I, you know, was kind of surprised by the the recognition. I've done a lot for this conference on a volunteer basis, so. I, I have a feeling that had, might have had something to do with it, but my one of my mantras or, or I guess, um, underlying philosophies about being in this business is to help other people succeed and being doing what you're talking about, being a part of a council or volunteering in some sort of way where you can support others in this profession, whether you're mentoring or you're tutoring or maybe you're just having lunch with someone who's considering going out uh, and applying for a massage school. It can make such a difference, and uh, yeah, I, I, I think more can. people should get involved in it. it uh, it's true. I think it's uh, um, it, volunteering is, is great on so many levels, and, of course, now you've given me one more reason to to hate that I missed last year because I didn't <laughs> see you get your award. So, uh, so I definitely should have been there. But it, volunteering is great because, of course, um, it, it's helping others, but – in the same way, it's helping you as well. And the more that we can strengthen the profession, the better off we all are. And so I, I encourage our students here at uh, at the school to join any sort of volunteer groups, just like you said, even if it's even if it's not a formal way, just volunteering, either donating massages to outside groups, to coming back here to the school and TAing on a volunteer basis. Um, joining volunteer associations like AMTA or something where they can get involved in the local community and getting involved in things like these kinds of conferences where it's not just them working in isolation, but them connecting with the profession as a whole. Right. I really think it makes a difference. And particularly, especially for people, students listening, that right now you're in a massage school setting where you're with this wonderful group of supportive individuals when you're in class and you feel really loved and cared for and you have these sounding boards that you can go to, um, your teachers and so forth. Once you get out of school, unless you're working in a group practice um, or, you know, some type of environment of that of that sort, you can often feel like completely bereft <laughs> where you walk out of the school and you suddenly feel like you're, you're flying without a net, <laughs> so to speak, and to have – groups where you're involved and and to be able to connect with other people um, or even just do massage for free like you were just saying Joe Bob I know a lot of people when they're first out of school they don't have enough clients and they start feeling a little rusty with their skills because they're not getting they're not getting as much work as they would like and doing something for people that maybe can't afford massage while you're building a clientele or trying to get your name out there whether it's a particular group or hospice or uh, you know, uh, some other group that really speaks to you, I think, can can be so so rewarding. Absolutely, it's uh, it's. I just I remember when I got out of school, going to conferences. The the first one actually not long after I got out of school, I actually ended up buying the massage school that I went to. So talk about somebody who really loves their school. I took it to the extreme. <laughs> But I, I bought the school, and all of a sudden, despite my business background and training as a massage <laughs> therapist, I had no 
you know, business buying a, a school, and I realized that after I bought it. And so the first thing I did was look for some sort of peer group, advice group, something that could help me understand what I was doing and getting into so that I didn't have to spend years doing trial and error, making mistakes in order to get there. I could connect with other people, learn from their successes and failures, and move ahead that much quicker. And it just so happened uh, that year was uh, – that was actually the last conference I remember being in Southern California. It was a schools conference, the AMTA Council of Schools, and they were meeting in Newport Beach. And that's the last thing that I can remember having gone to of any kind of scale – of a massage convention in Southern California, and that was back in 04, 05, something like that. Wow. And That's so cool. I went there, and it just, it completely changed my sort of career trajectory and and opened the doors for me. The people that I met there, many of them are still my friends in the industry. They've been huge help over the years. Now to be attending these and to be on panels and and doing stuff among these people that I've so looked up to and respected all these years and who helped me get going um, sometimes feels kind of strange and awkward because uh, I still hold them up on a on a higher level. But I know that I wouldn't be where I was today if I hadn't have gone to that first conference and then ultimately I, I could just roll off all the conferences and stuff I've been to over the years. I can't even remember them all, but it's those conferences and meetings and the networking that I did and the people that I got to know that really was was what changed where I am today and why this went from being a, a hobby and what could have been a mistake in buying a massage school into so much happiness and success on a daily basis for me now eight years later. That's awesome. I mean, what an amazing testimonial for how reaching out at, you know, an event, something simple, just going to a conference to get a little bit of education, how it can really change your life. It really can. And every every conference I go to now, even though I've been to so many, I always learn new things. I always meet new people. And I come back a better a better person and certainly better equipped to handle whatever whatever I need to business wise, massage wise, profession wise. Uh, after every every convention. Yeah, and, you know, I think what you're talking about is kind of leading us into talking a little bit about career paths. Um, you've definitely shared some interesting things about your own career path that are sort of unique. Anything else you'd like to add to that? I mean, going from being a massage therapist to a school owner now to uh, an executive with a school uh, chain, I guess, uh, it's quite a quite a journey it is it's uh and sometimes it's it's been such a busy journey that i don't spend a lot of time reflecting on it and maybe i should spend more time reflecting but i'm too busy doing to reflect but it does there are those moments where there's a wake-up call that like wow uh, i started massage school in september of 2003 so uh, just a little over eight years ago and really in, in careers and stuff, I feel like I've done a lot in in eight years. And again, a lot of that's just a, a testament to the to the profession and to the people that I've met in it and have been supportive. It, uh, yes, I've worked hard and, and and had to work hard to do it. It wasn't a free ride, but it's a profession that's so embracing and so helpful of others and so giving. And all of the new friends and people that I've met, it's just, it's been a, a wonderfully fabulous journey that, of course, continues to this day and, and has led to a career path that has been a lot of happy accidents along the way and reminds me that life isn't always what you think it's going to be like. Right. <laughs> so true. Now, a lot of students, I'm sure, are listening to this and thinking, well, I'm not going to buy a massage school or I don't, you know, I don't even know what I'm going to do next week. I'm just trying to pass my anatomy exams. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I was, I was there too. I was, uh, I tell our students here at the school, even on the first day of orientation, I said it eight years ago, I came in, sat in a classroom just like this with a handful of other people that I didn't know. Uh, and I just started massage as a hobby. It was just, 
something kind of to do. It just piqued my interest. I didn't even plan on making a career out of it at that point. And so many times I've tried to, like, leave it because it, I always thought of it as a hobby. And now I realize it, um, it is, it's still a hobby. It's just lucky I learned how to make money at my hobby. But, yeah, I tell the students all the time, you know, I started there, and it's just it's one step at a time. And everybody's journey is different. And when you look at the, the Massage Envy panel discussion that I'm going to be on where we discuss career paths, I'm on there. I, I look at the other names on there, and I'm like, how on earth did they – get me um i mean you've got whitney lowe and steve capellini linda sodium wolf uh it's uh jamie huffman from north carolina that's right and uh and all of these people that uh have just done so so much over the years and uh and i don't want to discount myself i have too but uh, these uh, i've just i've looked up to all of these people so much over the years and so to hear them and of course they all had different beginnings, and they had different pathways, and they've all ended up in a different place. So while they're all very successful in the industry, they're successful in different ways, and they arrived at where they are in different ways, just as I came my a path that worked for me. And I think that's what's going to be so much fun for especially new therapists and students to come to this and hear and just hear how everybody started. We we weren't successful when we started and we've made lots of mistakes over the years but at the end of the day we've uh we've come out okay yeah i i resonate with so many things that you're saying i i think about last year at the conference i was on a panel <clears throat> sitting between Les from ABMP uh-huh and Whitney Lowe <laughs> and i thought to myself as i was sitting there and there there were a couple other people on the panel Laura Allen and uh Tony I believe it's Tony Az from Massage Envy. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking to myself, how did I end up here in front of this room? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what did I do? I mean, not that I felt like it was punishment. It was very um, awing, I guess, would be the word I would use. I was very humbled to be sitting there between Les Sweeney and Whitney Lowe and as an equal member of this panel. And uh, your career as a student, you don't know where massage can take you. What I like to think of, or how I like to think about it, is it's what gave me the foundation, the foundation and the confidence um, and skills too, to take my career where I wanted to, to really um, take that next step. And I never knew where it was going to lead me. I still don't uh, after 18 years, but it's something that massage, I, I always come back to massage as being the foundation of it because it really helped me to ground myself and to earn a living so that I could pursue these other ideas that I had. And it's been exciting. <laughs> so you just never know what can happen when you're a student there, you know, on your first day. You really don't. And and I'm like you. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen to me tomorrow. Uh, when I look back at what's happened to me over the last eight years, I couldn't have seen most of it coming. And so I it it makes me excited to get up every day and come do my job because, I never know what's going to what's going to be next, and I hope that by sharing our career path, that we're really able to communicate that to students that each of them will have their own path to success. Success is going to be different for each one of them, and that they're all fully capable of achieving whatever their dreams may be. And as they go along that path, their dreams may change, or things may happen, and opportunities arise that that they don't know of and uh and of course i keep talking about coming to the conferences not just to plug this one but because i just i've I, so much of my career has really had turning points at these conferences and i think by them coming out to the conference and meeting people and seeing other things it opens up their mind to possibilities that when you're just sitting in a classroom you may not even know exist but you go right. out there and you see what's out there in the massage world, and all of a sudden you may never even thought about sitting on the state board of massage. It may have been just such a, a foreign kind of a place that you apply to, and you send your money, and they send you a certification, and, and that real people, you have to be in politics or something to be on the state board. And and I I just I hope that we can all spread that message to them on our panel that 
we were that we were where they were at one time too and in a lot of ways we still are we're not better people necessarily smarter people anything we just we work hard we look for opportunities and we remain open to to those opportunities that sometimes life just gives to us and my biggest thing is just to have fun if i'm not having fun i don't do something and it's been kind of a guiding principle that has opened up a lot of great doors for me and makes me enjoy what I do every day. So if we can instill that to the people who attend uh, the panel, then I think we will have accomplished something. Most definitely. Now, you were talking a little bit uh, before about success. What's one thing that you did that really contributed greatly to your success, you know, besides coming to conferences, of course? <laughs> Yeah, I well, I, it just like I said, I, I think about that one uh, AMTA Council of Schools that I went to, and it just, wow, that just, I mean, talk about a, a turning point there. That one was a, a huge one. But other things, I, I think networking, and I've now kind of gotten this odd reputation as being like a networker, and it really belies who I am because the the real me, the private Joe Bob, would just rather go home and be quiet and and uh stay out of uh out of the fray. But I've learned over the years how important networking is. And so I I kind of had to force myself in the beginning, especially when the school started sending me to conventions as a representative. I had to I had to represent and and earn a earn my paycheck for being sent and spending the school's money to go and send me to these conferences. So I did kind of have to force myself out of my comfort zone at first in the networking. And uh, and now then that led to to me getting this reputation as a networker, uh which I still don't see, but I learned Again, the, our profession is so open and generous, and there's so many great people in it that while I had to force myself to start networking at the beginning, I met so many wonderful people who are now my friends that it didn't seem like networking anymore because I just I couldn't now wait to go to conventions and meet not only the friends that I'd already met but new people. Right. And that's really been uh, embracing networking and making it – just part of what I do has has really been been a turning point, and like I said, now then with the, throughout the massage profession, all these people that I've revered for years and read their textbooks and everything else uh, to consider them friends, and is just is tremendous, and it makes it fun. And again, my like I said, it's it's all about being fun. So once I found that networking wasn't just work, or I wasn't just trying to like network to get something from people, but I was just meeting people and having fun with them and seeing where that relationship would go. And it turns out I've helped people, they've helped me, uh, and we've all just grown together as a group and, again, as a profession. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. And I'm kind of like you. I'm naturally, most people don't believe this, I'm naturally a shy person. It is, yeah, that I'm, is I am my, my bottom line, shy. But you find pretty quickly in the world of business in particular, that you, if you're shy, then people don't notice you. And if they don't notice you, they may not notice your business. And if they don't notice right. your business, they don't do business with you. <laughs> and so you kind of have to uh, get beyond that shyness a little bit in order to have that level of success, or at least that was my experience that you want. And, uh, and yeah, I think networking is a, a wonderful tip and suggestion for helping people to be more successful. And can uh, these kind of conferences make it so easy to do because you put all of these people with the same interest and passion together in one place to to talk about um, massage and then in, in this case, of course, the related fields of acupuncture and chiropractic. But everybody's here for basically the same reason. So it's easy to start talking to people because you know you have something in common. So whereas you might not just talk to people in the grocery store and tell them you're a massage therapist, here it's easy to talk about. And and you just find there's so many wonderful people and you start finding the ones you hit it off with and then you start meeting their friends and it just kind of grows. And the next thing you know, what started out as seemingly like a business 
a strategy or something just turns into friendships and and enjoying people and then and then you're like i'm I'm getting paid for this this is this is supposed to be work that I'm networking it's, <laughs> it's uh it's just it's it's having fun and enjoying other people and uh, so yeah it's uh it's it's a very good thing exactly well you know just to on that point and then I wanted to see what else you can share with our students listening but the, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now interviewing you for the American Massage Chiropractic and Acupuncture Conference if it weren't for networking. I was at a conference a couple of years ago where I was speaking and I met one of the organizers when I was walking down the hall, Scott Dartnell, and just, mm-hmm. you know, briefly said hello and you know, we didn't know each other so it was very uh formal, I suppose you'd say. And then later someone said to me, another fr- you know, mutual friend said, "Oh, you know, we're going to go and meet this group of people for some snacks and and beverages, would you like to come, you know, and Scott happened to be one of the people that was with that group, and so I had a chance to talk to him again in a less structured environment where we got a chance to network a little bit and get to know each other, and then we started com- uh, having conversations about this conference. It hadn't. It was still an idea. It hadn't even been organized yet, the one in Atlanta, and, you know, here I am a couple of years later, and I'm able to host this program and interview people like you, and uh, yeah, I was just saying not long ago I got to interview Eric Dalton, one of those people that I thought, wow, this is someone really big. And he was the one saying, oh, Felicia, thank you so much for interviewing me. And I'm thinking, you're thanking me? <laughs> I should be thanking you for taking the time to do this for me. So it's pretty amazing the results that we can get by just stepping out of our comfort zone a little bit sometimes. Yeah, it's, uh, well, and it's a, it's a great story that demonstrates the generosity of people in this profession and and also in kind of the humility. I mean, they're a very humble group of people who, no matter how successful or revered they may be by the rest of us, they're always willing to share their their knowledge and their thoughts. And it's uh, so it, it is it's tremendous. And so we're always kind of, I think, have this fear sometimes of approaching them or not knowing them. And yet when you meet them, you find out just how how truly wonderful people they are in addition to the successes that they've achieved. Definitely. I know I've taken up a lot of your time today, Joe Bob. I just want to ask you if there are any other recommendations or suggestions that you have for students and new therapists on how they can create a successful and enduring career in massage therapy. I think coming, again, to conferences is a good way to to start knowledge is knowledge is power as the saying goes and i think that the more knowledge people can get of course uh, i subscribe to every publication that's out there from massage magazine massage today uh, all the association magazines i think the more knowledge that you can have the better so reading about it networking with people going to conferences it's it's that all of that gives you knowledge, which then allows you to make informed decisions as you build your practice or as you become an employee for for someone. And that makes that really makes the difference because, as I said, I think it's sped up my successes in my career. I probably would have been successful, but if you have to go out and make your own mistakes and learn from them and trial and error, it takes a lot longer when you can – when we can work together uh, collectively as a profession and teach each other what's worked, what hasn't worked, and share that with each other, then we all progress faster as a, as a, both as a profession and as individuals in that profession. So it just, even when you get out of school, the learning doesn't stop. In fact, it's almost just beginning when you get out of school. So never stop learning. Excellent advice. And for those who want to get in touch with you um, or perhaps even get in touch with the California Massage Therapy Council for more information in case they can't make it to the conference, um, can you share some contact information with us? Sure. You can reach me, and I, uh, I'm i more than happy to talk to anybody and respond. My email is smithj, that's S-M-I-T-H, just the letter J, 
smithj at nhi.edu. And, of course, you can get to the school's website by www.nhi.edu. So NHI, of course, standing for National Holistic Institute. And then if you want to look for the, the CMTC certification or information about that, you can look up www.camtc.org, O-R-G. So that's www.camtc.org. And hopefully uh, I would love to hear from some of you. Wonderful. Well, I know uh, the students listening and others are going to want to come out to the conference and attend the um, the panel discussion on career paths and then, of course, to come to Student Day and learn more about the California Massage Therapy Council certification. So now I'd like to take a minute to just let everyone know how they can join us at the conference and get every get themselves signed up. The American Massage, Chiropractic, and Acupuncture Conference is one of the largest exhibitions of massage, chiropractic, and acupuncture products, continuing education, and business opportunities for practitioners of all disciplines. This year's conference will feature over 100 exhibitors, continuing education classes of one-hour, three-hour, and one-day workshops, including the panel discussion that we've been talking about. Other events during the weekend include a free keynote presentation sponsored by ABMP with Dean Juhan, the author of Job's Body, a charity golf tournament benefiting the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and the One Concept Gala and Dinner Dance. Now, the general registration cost for the conference is just $40, which includes admission to the trade halls and all one-hour presentations, participation in raffles and giveaways of literally thousands of dollars in prizes, between class coffee breaks and loaded goodie bags. Attendees will also have access to many special offers and promotions from the conference exhibitors, as well as the chance to have a fantastic time with friends and colleagues. For students, as we've been discussing, the conference offers a free student day and Smart from the Start program on Friday, which is sponsored by Massage Warehouse Script and per Performance Health, and in which Joe Bob will be speaking about the CAMTC certification. This day is dedicated to massage, chiropractic, and acupuncture students who are currently enrolled in school or who will graduate in 2012 and includes a free gift bag for the first 350 people. Also on Friday, all attendees are invited to attend a special presentation, Disciplines Unite, from 12 until 2, and the One Concept Job Fair from 2 until 4. Now, all of this is happening at the Conference Hotel. That's the Town & Country Resort and Conference Center, and I definitely suggest you make plans to stay there if at all possible. Single or double rates are just $125 a night, but space is limited, so please make your reservations now. Also, MPA Media is printing the American Massage, Chiropractic, and Acupuncture Conference event program inside all three of their magazines, Massage Today, Acupuncture Today, and Dynamic Chiropractic. These will be given out at the conference and distributed throughout the U.S. to over 133,000 practitioners. So if you are a vendor or an educator who is listening in today and you want to get some great exposure for your class or product, please contact Sandy Pierce of MPA Media for details on being a part of the conference program. So if you're ready to register for the 2012 American Massage, Chiropractic, and Acupuncture Conference in San Diego to meet Joe Bob, myself, and the other amazing instructors, there are now two ways to do so. First, you can register online and pick your courses instantly on the official conference website. Those are AmericanMassageConference.com, AmericanAcupuncture.com, uh, conference.com or American Chiropractic Conference.com, depending on your discipline. You may also register by phone. The call is free and operators are waiting to speak with you at 877 674 3504. That's 877 674 3504. We also invite you to stay connected with us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash American Massage Conference, American Chiropractic Conference, and American Acupuncture Conference. Again, the 2012 American Massage, Chiropractic, and Acupuncture Conference is made possible by all of our wonderful sponsors. Thank you so much to Massage Warehouse Script, MPA Media, 
H.J. Ross, ABMP, and Massage Envy Careers. I'm sure after listening to today's broadcast, everyone is ready to come to the conference and to come to the Massage Envy Careers panel discussion on career paths and the student day activities with Joe Bob Smith. Joe Bob, thank you for being so helpful and taking the time to talk to me today, uh, and of course for being a part of the conference in San Diego. We're thrilled to have you at this year's event. Thank you. I, I just want to add, I toured the resort uh, a few months ago, and it's a, it's a great place. I've already reserved my room. I highly recommend for people going to call now, reserve their room. You can't beat a $125 rate down here in Southern California. So that would be my suggestion. On I know they're supposed to register too, but get a room so you can stay there and be a part of everything. <laughs> Absolutely. I've made my reservation, so I'm ready too. Everyone, this is Felicia Brown, and on behalf of everybody from the American Massage, Chiropractic, and Acupuncture Conference, and One Concept Radio, I want to thank you for tuning in to this edition of the pre-conference broadcast series. Please remember to tune in each week through April 16th for more interviews and to visit our websites and Facebook pages for replays of all of the interviews in this series. We look forward to seeing you in San Diego in April. Please also consider joining us for the Canadian Massage Conference, November 1st through 3rd in Burlington, Ontario, Canada. Thanks again for tuning in, and have a fabulous day.